Alessandro here from Spicy Mustache with some more tips in order to help you to create your own green space outdoor or indoor. Thanks to the internet I can communicate with you and share different videos every week by using many devices and computers. However, we're not the only ones capable of doing this. Plants have their own web as well that allows them to communicate to each other and sometimes over really long distances. This web that helps plants to communicate between each other it's thanks to fungi that have a symbiotic relationship with plants. All existing plants that we know of have a mutual relationship with soil fungi that are called mycorrhizae. This mycorrhizae work their way through soil by using mycelium. This helps the fungi to absorb nutrients from the soil, like for example nitrogen or phosphorus, that plants most of the time struggle to extract. In this way, fungi exchange nitrogen and phosphorus with plants in return for the carbon that they absorb and they release as a form of sugar. Thanks to this exchange, they can both thrive and help each other to grow. But this is not the only thing that plants can do through this amazing web. They can also send nutrients to struggling plants or they can tell to other plants if there is a pest or any sort of disease coming their way so they can get prepared and activate their defenses. Personally I really think that mushrooms are one of the most fascinating things to study and they're also considered like the meat of the vegan world. They are rich in proteins, vitamins and minerals that are ideal for the human body. I had the chance to get in touch with Carter from the Central Texas Mycological Society to discuss a bit better about mushrooms. Hi, I'm Carter with the Mica Research Station here in Austin, Texas. I wanted to talk to you about a couple ways you could start introducing fungus into your backyard. Um, the first piece of advice I would give you is to connect with a local mushroom farm and start collecting their spent mushroom blocks, which you could fruit straight from the bag like that, or you could crush it up and put it into a bucket with some straw. And here you can see the fungus colonizing the straw and then fruiting out of the holes that we drilled for it. These are oyster mushrooms. You can also set up a mushroom bed like this. You'll crush up a block and use um, hardwood chips or straw. Either one of these, you'll see mushrooms in about a month. And then a more long-term plan you could do to grow mushrooms would be to get a super fresh hardwood log, preferably oak, but really any hardwood, drill a hole, introduce some of the fungus, and then seal it with a wax. Um, keep in a shady, moist spot in your garden and then Water it if it gets dry, and in about a year you'll start seeing mushrooms every year for upwards of 10 years. Lastly, you could start incorporating mycorrhizal fungi into your garden, and this is a powder that you can get at pretty much any organic garden shop, and you sprinkle this powder onto your seeds right when you're planting, and the fungal spores will germinate as your plants are germinating. Um, they'll form these relationships at the plant roots, extending the reach of, um, of the roots themselves, leading to greater access to the nutrients and water already in the soil, which leads to bigger, healthier plants which will yield more crop for you. Pretty much the only um, plants that won't do this are brassicas, so like your kales, cabbages, and broccolis will not form these relationships, but every other plant that you'll be growing in your backyard garden would do great with the addition of mycorrhizal fungi. So yeah, this is just a couple ways you can start introducing fungus into your backyard, and good luck! So after I had my chat with Carter, I definitely had to give it a go and try my own mushrooms. So I bought a few varieties from Marvelous Mushrooms based in Scotland. They've got really cool varieties to grow at home. So I will explain you how I set it up my tent and what temperatures I'm keeping, what kind of humidity and what light I'm using. I'm using Spider Farmer SF1000 for this setup and I think there are four main points why you should use the Spider Farmer Quantum Boards. Basically, there are highly quality components like Samsung chips and meanwhile drivers. The color spectrum is really complete and there is an even coverage and a high output per watt consumed. And also, there is a really low cost of energy. I'm using a carbon filter connected to an air extractor RVK Rhino 4 inches. This light comes with all the cables and material that you need to hang it directly into your tent. So basically, I'm just gonna connect the metal wires to the sides of the light. 
and I'm gonna use my adjustable ratchet roll plangers in order to calibrate the exact distance that I want to put my light. It's recommended 24 inches for vegetative stage and around 18 inches for the flowering stage. The light is also dimmable, which comes really handy because you won't need the maximum power the whole growing process. Once the setup is all done, it's time to prepare your mushrooms to go into the grow room. I'm gonna show you how to set up a lion's mane kit. So basically, you just cut the top of the bag, removing it completely. If you see loads of coral-like growth on the top surface of your block, just remove it with your hands and put it on side. After you did this step, just reseal the top of the bag with some tape, making sure there is no air coming in or out. Now grab your cutter and cut the three small 1cm crosses on the block. Now you just have to remove the air still inside the bag and fold it under the block. Just secure it with some tape. Now cut eight holes the size of a two pound coin in the outer humidity tent, the additional plastic bag that you got with your kit. Now spray the inside of your additional bag and place it loosely over the top of the block. It's really important to remove the bag at least once a day to release carbon dioxide. Now place your mushrooms in your tent and try to recreate autumn conditions around 17-19 degrees with a 70% of humidity. Pink oyster mushrooms are meaty and chewy in texture, despite their thin flesh and have a pungent seafood-like aroma. When raw, these mushrooms have a sour taste, but when they are cooked, they develop a mild fruity flavor and they are perfect for stir-fry. Lion's mane is rare in the UK and it's protected, so it shouldn't be picked up in the wild. Some research has found that lion's mane may protect against dementia, reduce mild symptoms of anxiety and depression, and help repair nerve damage. It also has a strong anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and immune-boosting abilities. Grey oyster mushrooms have a soft and slightly chewy taste. Some say they taste similar to more mushrooms and that they can develop a slight aroma of anise. There are many species of oyster mushrooms and their name is due to their resemblance to fresh shucked oysters. Also, another really cool thing about mycelium, it's in Oregon, which covers nearly 4 square miles, that makes it the biggest living organism we know of. Growing mushrooms was one of the best things I ever tried to grow. Mushrooms are really underestimated, but in the end they are a really important part in the development and growth of the plant. And also, how cool is that, that from uh, some spores in a syringe, you're gonna have something so amazing and so delicious to eat. If you would like to grow your mushrooms, you can check in the link in the description of this video for marvelous mushrooms. They've got different varieties and they explain in details how to grow your own mushrooms. If you like today's video, just subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post something new. I'll see you next Friday for another episode about urban gardening or a healthy life. See ya!